الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد كتاب الدعوات النبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لكل نبي دعوة مستجابة فتعجل كل نبي دعوته وإن اختبأت دعوتي شفاعة لأمتي إلى يوم القيامة فهي نائلة إن شاء الله من مات من أمتي لا يشرك بالله شيئا رواه مسلم كتاب الدعوات Supplications So the author has brought on the topic of supplications, da'wat. And as we would say, dua, making supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the aim in this topic is insha'Allah that we will learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran regarding supplications, dua, and also what our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned regarding making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things that we need to do, things that we need to stay away from so inshallah many things that we will learn uh, in this chapter of making dua and as it is a duty of every Muslim that we need to learn how to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's important and at times we see, we just rely and just leave it uh, upon the scholars or we just rely on the pious people and think that they'll just make dua on behalf of us. No doubt saying to the pious people or the scholars, indeed that is something uh, that can be done. All those that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but individually as Muslims we need to learn how to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ourselves also and it, when we are alone crying and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the scholars mention that the dua supplication in itself it means to seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it brings humility in one where one is putting their complaint to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is some uh, making dua the scholars mentioned that this is something which is mustahab is preferable so many narrations that come regarding dua we need to make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also it was the practice of the anbiya alayhim salatu wa salam they would make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also regarding dua in the holy quran in the holy quran we find allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in chapter 24 وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us make dua to me. Supplicate. And subhanallah, not in the next verse, not after a few words, immediately Allah's response is اُدْعُونِي make dua to me أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I will accept your duas. <coughs> So what an amazing thing that we that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us that Allah is saying make dua and I will accept your dua. Even if one is pious, one is a sinner, an open sinner, a fasiq, even this promises for them that Allah will accept the duas. Sometimes we think 
about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as we would think with other humans for example a person that, that has let someone down they may have let their father down or they may have let a friend down so what would happen this friend would take the privileges and benefits away from this person and maybe stop communicating with them so this is something which humans would do to one another but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although we have committed sins disobeyed Allah displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala broke the laws set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still accept our dua he will still accept the dua that we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we should not think as we would think with other humans that we have let them down or we have sinned sometimes a person says oh why should I make dua why would Allah listen to me I commit so many sins and I have done so much wrong Allah will not listen to me Allah will not accept my dua that this is a mistake Allah is promising us in the Quran that he will accept the du'as providing the conditions of du'a that are met where eating is halal and one's clothes the earning uh, that one buys the clothes with is halal so we should make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are many times where especially du'as are accepted the last part of the night between the azan and the iqama du'as are accepted and the great scholar <coughs> Mufti Zarwali Rahimahullah now has passed away who dedicated his whole life in teaching Quran and the hadith of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many of his clips, he was a great scholar and he would emphasize that upon when you make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he brought almost six narrations to support this from Jami' Tirmidhi and other books the first thing that we should do is praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then send salutation on our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he himself found many people that would begin dua with where they would begin with uh, salutation on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he would tell them that is almost six ahadith supporting this first thing is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising Allah could be with alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen sending salutation on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was salatu was salamu ala rasulihi al -kareem. so when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must praise Allah first and it could be done by saying the attributes of Allah al-Rahman, al-Rahim, al-Malik, al-Quddus till the end oh, Allahumma inna nad'uka Allah wa nad'uka al-Rahman and so on oh, Allahumma la uhsi thana'an alayk anta kama athnayta ala nafsik so praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then sending salutation on our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then the need that we have we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to be dedicated in our dua not that we have a doubt that Allah might accept this he might not accept this we have to be submissive dedicated when we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first hadith is the narrator is Abu Huraira radiallahu and he mentioned that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said for every prophet there's a supplication that is granted so there was every prophet that came there was one supplication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted because of the enemies that had um, mistreated them or attacked them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted this dua that this Prophet made against their nation. Every Prophet had made this supplication promptly in this world. But I have preserved it till the day of resurrection. So the, like Nuh alayhi salam, he made this dua against his nation. Allah accepted it. And like Salih alayhi salam, he made uh, the dua against uh, his people and 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one voice of Jibreel alayhi salam destroyed the nation. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not make the dua against his ummah. He kept this till the day of resurrection. And what is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept this dua to intercede for my ummah, for my people, for my followers. How merciful was our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Splendid character that he had, beautiful character that he had. And he has kept this dua safe for on the day of resurrection to intercede for my ummah, inshaAllah. It will benefit those of my ummah. One condition that they die without having ascribed or associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone that dies in the state of shirk, associating partners with Allah, saying that Allah has uh, a son, na'udhu billah, Allah has children, na'udhu billah min dhalib. Associating things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or idol worship, so all these things associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not forgiven. If one dies in this state, then this dua will not be accepted for this person. Now the ulamas and the scholars mention, how will this intercession be? It will benefit different people in different ways. Some people that would, would be in hell, they will not be sent to hell at all, to Jahannam. Some people that would be in the fire of hell, they will be released sooner than later. And some people that it will Elevate their status and their ranks in Jannah in Paradise. Allahumma rzuqna shafa'ata nabiyyina alayhi alfu alfu salah. That Allah let us have the intercession of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And wa'anhu qal qal rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inni attakhadtu indaka ahda lan tukhlifa Nihi fa inna ma ana bashar fa ayyul mu'minin aadaytu shatamtu la'antu jalattu faj'alha lahu salatan wa zakatan wa qurba tuqarribuhu biha ilayka yawm al-qiyamah muttafaqun alayh Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anh narrated Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Pray to Allah that oh Allah I have presented before you so grant it and do not deny it to me that I am only a human. Whichever of the believers I have hurt, abused, cursed or beaten, let that be for him a mercy, a purification from sin and a means of nearness to you such that because of these you will bring him near to you on the day of resurrection. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am only human at times you can get angry or something may have been said so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua on one occasion under the comment of this hadith it comes about Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha that when she was hurt and grieved and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to her and he read this dua Allahumma inni attakhadtu indaka ahda till the end of the dua that have, we have recited. The ulamas, the scholars mention that if anyone prays against someone, it happens sometimes parents, they may say something to their child who is annoying them, misbehaving, breaks things and so on. And it happens where parents, they say, go drown or they make, say things which they do not mean. So the sunnah is recite this dua. Allahumma inni attakhadtu indaka ahda lan tukhlifani. And inshaAllah, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things better. And amongst the Arabs we find with all the qualities that Allah has blessed them with, um, I've heard from many that when the children are misbehaving or if they have done something wrong, rather than in our Asian communities we make dua uh, against them, they would make dua in their favor. So even if the child is doing something wrong, they would say, Allah make him pious, Allah make him an imam, or make him, they will make dua 
in their favor. So, so uh, sometimes there are moments when du'as are accepted. So we should be careful what we say. We don't mean to say things at times to the children. But then at times, there are certain times when du'as are accepted. May Allah give us a true understanding. وعنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دعا أحدكم فلا يقول اللهم اغفر لي إن شئت ارحمني إن شئت وارزقني إن شئت وليعزم مسألته إنه يفعل ما يشاء ولا مكره له رواه البخاري أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه ذيتد الله زمسن صلى الله عليه وسلم said when one of you prays he should not say oh Allah forgive me if you wish O oh Allah, have mercy on me if you wish. O oh Allah, give me sustenance if you wish. Rather, he should be determined and supplicate for what he does, what he wishes, and there's no one to compel him. So when making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a few things that the muhaddisin mentioned. Number one, determination. Number two is humility. Number three is being submissive. Number four is it when you are making dua, it's an ibadah, it's a worship. So it shows a true spirit of servitude. One is humble. And these are the things that we need to adopt when we make dua to Allah. And if we need something, we should repeat it again and again and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should not lose hope in Allah's mercy and we should not have any doubts that the dua will not be accepted indeed Allah's promise in the Quran if that thing is good for us at that moment <coughs> Allah will grant it to us if it's not good for us Allah will replace something better for us and if not then Allah will give us that reward in the Akhirah so duas indeed are accepted just because we may be asking for something and we've not seen the du'a or we may seem to think the du'a is not accepted this is a misconception, misunderstanding Allah accepts du'as and Allah has promised us that He will accept our du'as so we should not stop making du'a but continue being determined and again and again asking and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.